Hey, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Uh, we just headed back behind the waterfall in subterranean hell, and we're going to pick up where we left off, so let's get to it, shall we? And you'll probably recognize this music right off the bat. This is uh, the Wizardry Lab music, and there's our first new enemy, the Homunculus. Uh, I will get that soul, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the homunculus soul, which allows you to summon homunculus. And for those of you who don't know what the hell homunculus are, or homunculi, rather, uh, they're basically creatures, they're bodies without souls, kind of, I guess is the best way to describe them. And you can use them outside of water, too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, they're basically like soulless body clones of people. Anyway, Serenity Robe is up here, and if we take a look at that, there it is, a blessed robe that calms the spirit, and as you can see, it boosts intelligence by a whopping 10 points, but it does lower defense quite a bit. So if you're doing a strategy uh, with soul-based abilities on like a boss, for example, Serenity Robe probably might be the way to go if you don't plan on taking many hits. Let's see, we'll just skip these guys. And over here we get a super potion. Of course, it just restores health. No need to show those anymore. I've probably got about five or six of those throughout the walkthrough so far. More homunculi. Saying that name makes me want to play Valkyrie Profile, too. Anyway, uh, we just got a, what was it? Bloody Stud. Kind of sounds like a porn term. <laughs> anyway, it's a deep red stud earring made of ruby, and it boosts your defense and intelligence. Intelligence just a little, defense not so bad. But I'll just keep my soul eater ring equipped. It, luck's always a nice bo bonus, and I will be farming souls not in the not too distant future because I have to do all of my weapon synthesis soon. So I'm gonna need a lot of souls. Anyway, you notice these kind of uh, ghosts here, revealed platforms up there? We'll be coming back to that soon. So yeah, that's definitely the place to farm merman souls if you're <laughs> in need, which I will be. And... Notice I got a $100 coin there a minute ago. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to get money in this area because all of the candles actually only drop $1 coins. And as you can see here, we have another one of these golden vault doors. Now, the goal is to get 666 as your last three digits, and I have 550. So I'm going to have to get 116 off camera, and I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I have 6666 as my last digit, so it should work. I actually had to go back to where the waterfall room was, and, or right after it, actually, and farm the candles there, but it was pretty quick. I managed to get a $100 coin right away, so I was only 16 away. Anyway, we got the gold ring for our efforts, which is a ring that makes monsters drop more money. Basically, whenever you kill a monster, it's got a certain... Uh, separate drop uh, rating for hearts and money opposed, as opposed to its uh, item drops and sometimes regular monsters will just drop like a coin or if in rare cases a money bag and that ring makes your chances of getting those much higher in fact you can get uh, $500 money bags quite commonly and it also affects candles so if you destroy a candle when you're at full hearts you can get a money bag really easily from that now in this room you want to transform into the bat company soul and basically do a reverse letter Z so you kind of start at the bottom and then work your way to the upper right and then over to the upper left and basically yeah all of those ghosts uh, reveal the pathway but by the time you can actually see it at all well there's too many to fly without getting hit every other second. So, anyway, yeah, here use Puppet Master and Skeleton Ape to get past the Iron Golem, and then abuse its uh, inability to turn around by switching over to the Imp Soul 
and the Dead Pirate Soul, which doubles damage from behind. Now, this monster only has, I think, 10 MP, and it's got like 30 or 40 HP, and you can only do one damage at a time on it. So, if you're doing two damage with Dead Pirate and it only has 10 MP, obviously that's the way to go since Imp allows you to destroy MP when you hit it rather than HP. Anyway, I'm going to get its soul and I'll be back as soon as I've got that, okay? Alright, I've got the Iron Golem soul, which allows you to become an invincible Iron Golem. <laughs> I almost said invisible. Yeah, anyway, as you can see up by my HP, uh, it did a big number on me. I was testing out other soul combinations, although it turns out Imp was the best combination. Uh, but yeah, this is it, and as you can see, it really uses up MP. You can basically just walk around and uh, kick and punch with it. It's more just there for looks. And let's see. I'm looking for a soul that can help me heal up. I guess I'll go with Persephone. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I have almost no HP, so I gotta be careful now. This is the first time I've ever almost been dead, I think. And over here we return to another familiar musical scene, which is the Lost Village score. So obviously we're somewhere under Lost Village now. Let's head right first. Alright, and this obviously connects back to the wizardry lab, and we get a new monster, which turned into a whole bunch of hearts and dropped some noodles. Now, if we look at the noodles, it's a consumable item. Noodles floating in a broth made from pork bones. Uh -uh -uh. Anyway, this is the heart eater. It's got a rare item drop and a very rare soul to collect. So I'll get both of those off screen and I'll meet you back here once I have them. Alright, I've got the heart eater's soul now, which allows you to obtain more hearts. Which is basically almost like the gold ring that we got earlier. It just makes uh, monsters drop hearts more often, so it's pretty much useless unless you really, really need some hearts, I guess. In which case, I'd actually recommend the Treant Soul, which makes your uh, MP regenerate higher. And it also dropped the Heart Pendant, which is a useless accessory. These things are annoying, because they move pretty quickly. But they're a great way to refill your MP if you need them. Ah, screw it. And over here we get UMA News, -ish, or Volume 4, which says, With great regret, we announce that this is our final issue. Uh, so basically, yeah, it kind of indicates there's only three hidden monsters. So once you found those, you don't have to worry about searching for a fourth. Now notice we've uncovered both areas of the wizardry lab that we couldn't reach earlier, so let's finish uh, heading up this tunnel and we'll call it a video for the day once we get to the top. Alright, and as you can see here, we have a secret passage. Uh, I'm not going to go in there quite yet. Instead, I'm going to keep exploring this tunnel first. Now, up here, we just got a neck warmer, which is an accessory, a cold beating garment made of a new synthetic material. And this obviously boosts your defense and constitution. So, if you play defensively, oops, uh, it's not a bad idea, I suppose, but since most monsters never make it to me, I kill them beforehand, uh, it's pretty much useless. Now, up here, notice there's bombs all over the ceiling, but if we press that detonator, it explodes them, and reveal a secret passage back to the Lost Village up here. Now, instead of exploring up there again, we're going to head into this secret passage now. Attempting to refill some life with Persephone. And at the far end we get some caviar. 
one of the world's three great delicacies, sturgeon eggs. Now, if you've never had caviar before, I recommend trying it. Um, it's not terribly bad, but it's one of those things where you really have to try it once in your life. Uh, I happened to have it when I was 17. I went on a cruise uh, during high school down into Mexico and we had caviar. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Uh, we're out of time. Thanks for watching and we're going to visit Yoko in the next episode. More voice acting.